Namaste everyone. This is a grounding practice meant to root us back and connect us with our sense of security and stability. So it's a very short sequence, about 25 minutes. You can practice it on its own or in conjunction with any other practice. This is meant for a beginner intermediate level. And we focus through some standing postures to work through the hips and the legs to connect us to the earth. So you find your comfortable seated position, take either hand, the fingertips to the earth, and the hand that is free to the heart center, just on top of the sternum. We start to take deep belly breaths, filling up the belly like a balloon as we inhale, and letting it gently release and draw inwards as we exhale. So keep that hand really rooted down and connected to that sense of security, that stability of the earth, the ground beneath you. And as you stay here a few more moments, you can set or say any affirmation. That affirmation might be, I am safe, I am secure, I have a strong foundation. Whatever connects with you to help you calm down the mind and to remind yourself that you are safe, you are secure, and even if everything seems a little unstable and unpredictable around you, that in this moment, for the next few minutes, all you have to do is breathe and move. And that is stable, and that is secure. few more cycles of breath, and starting to even out your inhale with your exhale to a count of five on the breath in, and the same count of five on the breath out. Last breath in. Last breath out. If you're sitting on a block or a pillow underneath the bum, you can just remove that out from underneath you. So the sitting bones connect now firmly to the earth, coming into Sukhasana, an easy cross of the legs. Touching the fingertips both to the floor. As you inhale, sweep the arms above the head, gaze up. As you exhale, circle the arms back down, fingertips to the ground, shin to the chest. Inhale again, turn the palms skywards, lift the heart, lift the eyes. As you exhale, fingertips circle back down, bring the head towards the heart. Take one more. Inhaling to sweep the arms up, gaze up. Exhaling, circling the hands back down, shin to chest time as you inhale draw the hands up and as you exhale take the right hand towards the earth tip the body over towards the right side into a side bend as you stretch into the side make sure you keep your left hip grounding down and a push into the right hand and elbow if it reaches the floor as you inhale come back to the center palms together exhale left hand to the floor send the body to the left into your side bend Try to open up through that right rib cage and keep some length in the underside of the left waist. A little deeper reach through that top arm. As you inhale, draw the palms back together. As you exhale, twist to the right. Right fingertips behind you, back of left hand to outside of knee. And keep that same grounding, a little pull of that left sitting bone slightly back. The spine stays neutral, there's no arch into the lower back. And keeping the twist, turn just your head back to the center, looking over your left knee. And as you exhale, send that right arm in the same direction as your left knee. So we have the side bend and the twist at the same time, looking up and underneath that armpit towards the sky. Moving slowly towards the other side. As you inhale, come back to the center, release the hands, circle, sweep both arms up. As you exhale, twist to your left. Right hand to outside of the knee, left fingertips behind you. 
pull that right hip slightly back so your hip bones are aligned with each other. Send the heart behind you and gently the head behind you. Exhaling. On your inhale, turn just the head back to the front, look towards the right knee. As you exhale, send that left hand in the same line as your right knee. Keep pushing into your right hand so you get that opening through the side of the body. Really strong, powerful grounding through both of your hips to keep you rooted to the earth. As you inhale, come back to the center, palms together, eyes up, heart up. As you exhale, draw the hands down the center this time. Taking the hands to the fronts of the knees as you inhale, bring the spine forward. As you exhale, round the back chin to the chest. Inhaling into your cow, seated cow. Exhale, straight arms round behind the sitting bones. Last one, inhale to arch forward, chest forward, head up. Exhale, chin to chest, round the spine. This time we start to move it into a big circle. So finding those same shapes, the forward bend, the back bend, and the spine, that flexion and extension, but just making a big circle, maybe moving through the shoulders, moving into our Sufi wheel. We inhale the spine forward and we exhale the spine back as we round. Reverse your directions, take a few more circles of the opposite side. Just feeling that movement through the whole spine, working out any wriggles, any little points of tension through the back. As you inhale, come back to the center and find a block if you have one. You can also do this pose actively. Bring the hips to the top of a block or one or two pillows. Widen your feet out, coming into Malasana into our prayer squat. Elbows to the inner knees, palms together at the heart in Namaskar. Just a gentle pressure if you're supported, if you're in more of a yin variation. If it's more active, a little more press of the knees and the elbows together. As we stay here, come back to your Samavriti breath, your equal inhale and exhale. And bring some attention to your pelvic floor to Mula Bandha, in the space of the perineum, keeping that area gently contracted up towards the lower belly, connecting us to our root, connecting to our sense of security. If you're comfortable exactly as you are, stay as you are. If you want a little variation, then slide that left shoulder down towards the knee. Take the fingertips towards the floor and that right arm up and over towards the wall. Inhale back to the center. Exhale, opposite side. Slide the right shoulder down to the inner knee, fingertips down. Find the side bend, keeping the arm directly up or a little deeper if the lats are open. Back to the center as you inhale, meeting here if you didn't take that version. As you exhale, take the hands to the floor, remove blocks, pillows if you're using them. Let's so your feet a little bit wider apart. Take the backs of the hands to the floor, coming into dangling. Again, more of a yin posture for a few breaths. Bend your knees as much as you need where your belly rests to your upper thighs. But keep a lift through your sacrum, very important. So imagine that you're being pulled up by a string from the tailbone, and that the arms, the spine, and the legs are just dangling down into gravity. So the hips start to release, and the spine starts to traction out. Relax your jaw. Allow the cheeks to hang heavier so the facial muscles relax. Relax the scalp, the hair. Taking the last couple breaths here. Releasing the hands if you were holding opposite elbows. Use the hands to the fronts of the shins and the legs. Slowly roll yourself up. For three, two, all the way to standing. And without being in a specific shape, just pause. If you need, you can bend the knees slightly. Close your eyes and absorb the pulse, absorb the effects. 
When you're ready, slowly step towards the front of the mat, starting to make the pose more active, finding Tadasana. Root the feet down into the earth, raise the crown of the head a little taller, start to move into your Ujjayi breath, inhaling the hands up. As you exhale, keep the knees slightly bent as you fold all the way forward into Uttanasana. So you inhale, take the hands to the shins or come up to fingertips, look forward. Exhale, step the right and then the left foot back to your high plank. Pausing here for a couple of breaths to firm the belly and to fire up the glutes. Active bump, heels push back, crown of the head pulls forward. Preparing for three half push-ups. As you inhale, take the knees to the floor, shift the shoulders forward over the fingertips. As you exhale, right angles of the arms. Inhale, press back, straight arms. As you exhale, lower through your half chaturanga elbows, brush right beside the ribs. Last one, inhale, press back, straight arms. As you exhale, squeeze the elbows in, chest is open, this time all the way to the floor. Lift it to baby cobra, inhale, lift the chest, the head, and lift the hands. Elbows squeeze towards the back and the feet are pressed down into the earth. So active, rooting through the feet, thighs firm, gripping together at your center. Holding. As you exhale, tap the forehead to the floor, a little deeper cobra, slide your hands a little more forward, this time weight into the hands, lifting up into a slightly higher cobra. Make sure the hip bones are still rooted down. Elbows pull in, and the heart pulls forward. As you exhale, release head back down. Take the hands back to the middle chest, tuck the toes and lift your tail into your downward dog. First downward facing dog, so feel free to move in any way. Bend the knees, press the tailbone a little higher, the heart a little lower, eyes towards the navel point. Looking forward, rise hip toes. As you inhale, step the right and then the left front of the mat flat back. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. As you inhale, reaching the hands up, palms together, looking up to the thumbs. As you exhale into Tadasana, hands alongside the body. This time interlace all 10 fingers, turn the palms to face the ceiling. Shift your weight forward and balance on your tiptoes. So feel how that push against the earth really allows the legs to activate and the hands to rise higher. Pressing strongly, pushing the earth away from you. Inhale. And as you exhale, heel slowly down and fold forward. Inhale, lengthen to your flat back. As you exhale, either step back, left foot and then right, or jump back, this time directly into your chaturanga. As you inhale, slide forward, upward facing dog. And as you exhale, to your downward facing dog. Steady out the breath here. Keeping the hands as wide as the shoulders, upper arms rolling out as the forearms and the lower arms roll in, rooting down through the thumb and the second fingers. Eyes towards the belly, and then looking forward, rise toes, inhale, step or float, front of mat, flat back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhaling back to standing, palms together, rise up, eyes up. As you exhale, Tadasana, palms forward into your mountain pose. Bend the knees, sit down into your chair, Knees, thighs together, inhale, look up. As you exhale, swing your arms back, find an airplane back, flat back, two more. Inhale, into your chair, palms together, sit down. Exhale, into your airplane, palms face the floor. Last one, inhale, sit down into your chair. As you exhale, swing the arms back, heart open. And then keeping your flat back, reach the arms forward to the front of your mat, staying there or rising up to your tiptoes and balancing, gripping the thighs, feeling that stability through the whole lower body, through the legs, through the hips. As you exhale, heels down and dive forward. Inhale, Udva Uttanasana. As you exhale, hands to the mat, step or jump back directly, Chaturanga if you're jumping. Inhale, slide forward, upward dog as you exhale to your downward facing dog. Bring the big toes to meet at the center. Rise tip toes, raise the right leg up. Inhale. As you exhale, push the left heel down to the floor. Inhale, rise up left toes. 
Exhale, knee to your nose, round the spine, no sound, step forward between the hands, lunge. Stay high on your back, tiptoes. Firm the belly, lift slightly off that front thigh. When you're stable, bring the body all the way up into high crescent. Inhale. As you exhale, find your airplane one more time. Sweep the arms back. Two more. Inhale, lifting up, high lunge. Exhale, swing the body forward and the hands back. Last one. Inhale to swing yourself up. Exhaling, bringing yourself low. This time, keep your spine in line with your back leg. Reach the arms forward right beside the ears, just like we did in Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to the mat. Open your back heel out. Angle the body to the long side of the mat and find your warrior two. Heel to arch alignment, arms parallel to the floor, eyes forward over the right fingertips. Soften the neck muscles, active energy through the arms, all the way out through the fingertips as you pull energy into the belly and the core, Uddiyana Bandha. Take one more inhale and an exhale. Next breath in, since the right hand a little forward and then up to the ceiling, coming into your reverse warrior. Right hand reaching for the back of your mat or directly up to the ceiling. If you have the half bind, slide the left hand behind the lower back, find the top of the right thigh. Keep the half bind if you choose as you exhale into your side angle, taking the hand to the floor or if you are modifying, take the right elbow to the top of your thigh as shown. So elbow to thigh if you're modified, left arm keeps the line of the side body and the back leg. Stay here three more breaths. If you have the full version, Nashtanga version, go for it. Bind, half bind if you feel open into your shoulders. Looking up to that left palm or up to the ceiling if you are in the binded option. As you inhale, come back to your warrior two. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands down, pull your knee to your nose, find your plank, active core, lift the hips higher, hold, pull, everything strong, pushing the floor away from you. And then as you exhale, slide that foot back, feet a little longer, shift forward, lower chaturanga. Inhaling, Udva Mukha. As you exhale to your Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Preparing for the other side, take a breath in. If you need, exhale mouth. Toes together, left leg raises, inhale. As you exhale, right heel pushes to the floor. Inhale, rise up, right tiptoes. Exhale, pull the knee to your nose, round into your plank. Strong in the hands, step forward, lunge. Lift yourself up, fingertip lunge. And then when the belly is firm and the back of the body is ready, bring yourself into your high crescent, inhale. As you exhale, swing the arms back, chest forward, airplane lunge. Inhale to your high crescent, Alanasana. Exhaling, sweep the arms back, chest, heart open. The last one, inhale forward. As you exhale, find your airplane. And then send the arms forward beside the ears just for a moment so the back is stronger, the shoulders are more active. Exhale, fingertips to the floor, adjust your right leg, find your warrior two stance. Cartwheel yourself up and open to the long side. Widen your arms. Look towards that front hand, eyes over the middle fingertip. Breathing, finding steadiness and stability in this foundational pose. A familiar shape, feel strong in the legs, maybe a little deeper into that front knee. Get a little pull into that back hand, and then shift the front hand to the front of the mat. Find your reverse warrior, left hand up to the ceiling reaching up, maybe looking up if that's comfortable in your neck. If it's not, keep looking to your back foot. Half bind is there, option to keep it as we progress into our Parashvakonasana variation. variation. Shift forward, elbow to thigh, reaching that top arm towards the front of the mat, hand all the way to the inside or the outside of that left foot. Finding that long diagonal sideline of the body. Breathing for three. Breathing for two. Last breath in. Last breath out. Looking down to transition as you inhale back up to your warrior two. As you exhale, cartwheel your hands down. 
plant your palms, slide your left foot back, knee to your nose, lift through the belly, through the hips, round the upper back, strong in the hands, strong in the feet. Step the foot back, slide the feet a little further back, lower chaturanga. Inhaling upward dog, as you exhale to your downward dog, pausing a few breaths here. You need to make it a child's pose, make it a child's pose. Steadying back out, rise tiptoes, look forward, walk or float, front of the mat, flat back. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. As you inhale, sit down into your chair, hips up, palms together, fingertips up, look up. Exhale, hands to Namaskar at the heart and open the side of the body. You can stay facing the front of your mat, I'm just facing you to demonstrate. Moving into Vrikshasana tree, pull the right knee up and in towards your shoulder. And then take the foot to the inner thigh, calf or ankle if you are modifying. Hands can stay at prayer at the heart. Otherwise, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, and shoot them up to the sky into Kali Mudra. Strong gesture of the hands. If you are balanced here, start to send your eyes up, looking towards the fingertips, and your heart slightly up. Pressing that right foot into your inner left groin, rooted into that standing leg. Looking back forward, using the strength of your right leg, point the toes, kick out in front of you, shoot the fingers out in front of you, holding, using the strength of that leg to keep it lifted. One more inhale. And as you exhale, release that right leg down, relax your hands, give them a little shake. A little release. Ready for the other side. Draw the left knee up and into your shoulder. Exhale. Take that foot to the inner groin. Calf, ankle as demonstrated here if you need. If you're losing your balance, keep your toes to the floor. Hands interlocked at the heart. Index fingers shooting up. You're squeezing the palms together if your arms are up as you try to pull the hands away from each other so the chest becomes more active the upper back becomes more active looking up changing your drishti grounding down through that right big toe and drawing that inner seam of the right thigh back in towards your midline looking forward bringing the hands back to the chest as you exhale Inhale, kick that left leg forward, point the fingertips forward, hold for two. One more inhale. And as you exhale, release that leg. Stretch the feet, shake out the legs if you need. Last pose in the sequence. Take the hands to the mat, step your feet back, find a tabletop, and cross your right leg over your left. So really trying to stack your knees here, coming into Gomukhasana, into cow face. If both of your sitting bones are not on the ground, so if one of your hips is lifted, then straighten out your bottom leg is shown. So bring that left leg forward so that both hips are level. And slowly folding forward if you have some space. If that feels quite easy in the body, interlock your hands behind the back and draw the hands towards your head at the front of your mat. Breathing here. Slowly start to release. Release the hands first. Use them. Walk the spine back up first. And unwrap your legs. Shift back into your tabletop to transition. Cross the opposite leg on top. Widen your feet so there's enough space for your bum in between your heels. You can roll your flesh of the legs a little bit apart to create some space. Come to the fingertips, bringing yourself forward that grounding of the bum just like we did the very beginning if you're comfortable there interlock the hands behind your back and bring them forward into your chest expansion last couple of breaths in this pose releasing the hips and allowing the body to start to calm down as you inhale bringing yourself back up and feel free to take any other seated postures here, any yin poses, any meditation pose. Or if you choose, lie down on your back and rest in Shavasana for about five minutes. 
Thank you for joining this practice and see you next time.